Peace and blessings and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is sponsored by HeritageHipHop.com. Earn while you create. We celebrate the heritage of hip hop, which is God culture. And since God is within us, you are the heritage of hip hop. This episode is sponsored by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. By making one decision to change your financial future could change your life entirely. Go to heritagehiphop.com and click on the link for transparent credit repair. Fill out the questionnaire and receive 20% off of all services given by transparent credit repair. Change your life by opening your wallet to receive more income instead of paying more debt with transparent credit repair. On this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast, we go back to the New York City, Brooklyn life. Shout out to Brooklyn, but... Most importantly, shout out to the West Indies and my Caribbean people, because tonight we have Trini the Body on Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. New voice, new face, model, teacher, dancer, and music artist. She's changing the world by celebrating her melanin, and we celebrate her by listening to her story. So everybody, make sure you pay attention to this new artist, and let's hear what she got to say. More so, I'll be back with the rest of my commentary at the end of this podcast. Salute. Peace and blessings, everybody, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. Tonight, I have not only a beautiful face, but a strong voice that's coming into the industry to tell the world who she is and why she bodies the game. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Trini The Body, and I am from Brooklyn, born and raised. But my culture is Trinidadian, St. Martin, and Grenadian. That's what's up. See, that means that we have something to talk about that's very international but domestic at the same time, and that's pride. One thing I've picked up from you is you are very proud of yourself. Where does that pride come from? Oh, man, that pride comes from a very deep place. Um, you know, it's something that I had to build over the years, you know, from a lot of different um, difficult situations that I found myself in that I didn't understand. But now today, being uh, the woman that I am, I definitely understand it. I, I identify with it, and I'm proud of who I am. So, yeah. I love that because being a woman comes with a big responsibility that I think men don't understand. And when a man finally gets the voice of a woman, not that he'll completely understand it, but when he starts to listen, there's a passion and a deepness that's there that comes out in many different ways. Definitely. When did when did you first find your beauty to express it? Um, I want to say when I was when I was um hmm, like I want to say thirteen maybe. Thirteen? How so? Yeah. The reason why I say 13 is because um, growing up, I look like my brother and my father a lot. So I had um, those features, manly light, if that makes sense. So when people look at me, they see my brother. They see my father. They didn't see my mother. So I kind of struggled with that, and it was like I was beating myself up about it, you know, my, my my brother and my father is not, you know, ugly or anything like that, but as a female, you know, you don't really want to be compared to looking like a man, right. you know. Um, and then at 13, I started doing modeling. So mm -hmm. when I started doing modeling back in um, St. Martin, it was actually called the Queen Show, and um, mm -hmm. I won. And from then, it was like, over <laughs> you know it was over nobody could tell me anything like i'm a model and that's just that and i'm gonna keep doing this you know but when i was younger this is something that i I had wanted to do which was modeling and dancing and things like that so um mm -hmm. from then is when i really noticed it and fell in love with that aspect of myself and then mm. and then it came a point in time where i lost it you know so interesting yeah See, beauty is more than a look, though. Because, see, that's the perfection that God made when he made a woman. Because if a person could only look at you and feel, that's a very shallow person. Yeah. But, yeah. 
but the beauty of you comes from your idea. It comes from your voice. It even comes in your stature for how you stand. And as a woman, how you move and how you stand still is poetry in motion. Yeah. How did you define that beauty of yourself? Not the look, but the person you are. The person that I am. When um, it took that aspect of myself, I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, yeah, you know, I found that when I was 13 too. No. Um, <laughs> that actually came in. That actually came into play when I got a little older. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was because of the things that people said to me about me. Mm-hmm. And um, it kind of had me look at myself in the mirror and see those words that they express of who I am. And mm -hmm. one thing they always leave with is, you know, the type of person that I am, I'm a beautiful person within because I like to help people. I like to be there for people. I like to listen and also give back a few good words if I can. If I can make somebody feel good just by my words and um, what I say to them, and help them see it from my aspect other than their aspect because they're seeing mm -hmm. it one way so they don't see the bigger picture other than just that one point that they see. If I'm able to help you see it other ways, I feel great within myself. And then mm -hmm. I start to see exactly what people see when speaking to me, if that mm -hmm. makes sense to you. So it's like, I'm very kind. I'm a loving person. You know, I like to help people and take care of others. And that's when I realized that I was a beautiful person within myself and that I do have other things to offer versus mm -hmm. the outside part of who I am. And that's my point to this interview. The point of it is Trinity the body can be the most beautiful thing on the screen to many, but to much more than just the people who see her, the people that hear her are going to be inspired by the strength in her voice. Definitely. As a young lady, though, you live in a world where people will be damned to hear, but be honored to hurt, to, um, to, to listen. Right. What's more important for you, to be heard or to be listened to? Honestly, um, I feel like both is very important because in order for you to be heard, you have to listen mm -hmm. because you want to give the, someone that same respect into being heard. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like both of those are very important to me, whereas mm -hmm. I sh truly understand what the other person is projecting to me. And if mm -hmm. I don't understand, I like to ask, well, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Like, can you further explain? Because I don't really understand what you're saying to me. And I feel like that's something that a lot of us can do is ask those questions if you are unsure, you know, versus assuming uh, those things. So definitely I would say both of them are very important to me personally, and that's all I can say on it. What part of Brooklyn are you from? Best I do it that. Okay, now see, now we're going to take this turn this to another turn. Because see, <laughs> to be listened to and to be heard is something that Brooklyn demands. That's why they shout out Brooklyn everywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? And see, the one thing that I love about Brooklyn is that Brooklyn has this secret love affair with North New Jersey for some reason, because they're like the same place for some reason. You know what I'm saying? And it's really? like, yeah, really. <laughs> like, I don't know too much about Newark. So, I mean, I've heard some things, but I don't know too much, so I can't really agree well, with that. The only difference between Brooklyn and North is that people from North don't shout in Brooklyn. They shout Brick City. <laughs> And North is, and, and Brooklyn's bigger. You know what I'm saying? Every MC from Brooklyn comes to North and they feel like they come, they back in Brooklyn. Because Brooklyn is known to be that hard, gritty, do or yeah. die, me versus the world. And I gotta make sure it's me versus the world because no one's gonna take the world from me. You see what I'm saying? Yes, that's definitely true. 
And I feel like everybody that grew up in Brooklyn or lived in Brooklyn had a piece of that, had to go through a piece of that in their lifetime where it's me against the world, you know, mm-hmm. me against the street. So, yeah, I could definitely agree to that. So with that aspect, how does that come through and how you do your art, whether it's physical, because you model too, <clears throat> or the music? Um, so before I would do it through my dancing, okay. um, where how I was feeling, I would relay through the movement that I portrayed through the music. Um, mm-hmm. And that was something that I was really big on growing up. Um, doing at school, I was taking dance and every school that I went to, every grade that I was in, I was doing dance. I felt like, um, there was a, there was a lot of me that needed that. It was like a release. I was able to release any anger, anything that I felt at the time with that versus towards someone else. Um, Mm -hmm. and with the modeling, it was more of a, I'm going to prove everybody that said I couldn't do it, that I'm going to do it because I was a lot sicker than the other models. So it was mm-hmm. more like, you know, you can't get this role. You can't walk in that show. You can't do this shoot because you're too big. Um, and you're not petite enough and things like that. So I actually did it. I actually done a lot of shows. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of shoes, and I proved everybody that had something to say against it wrong. Um, and as far as the music goes, <laughs> that's just a little different for me because, um, you know, I kind of, I kind of do it through how I want to feel. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, like it's like I don't want to speak about things that's like gonna put me down in a moment and at least not coming out as an artist doing something like that. I want people to know that I like to have fun. So when you hear my music, you're going to hear that. You're going to hear fun. You're going to hear happiness. You're going to hear a part of uh, who I am all over, well-rounded, all the Caribbean vibes and all the, you know, hip-hop New York Brooklyn vibes, you're going to get all of that within my music, and I wrap it all into one and make it me. You know, um, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's the best way I can put it, honestly. I like that because I say this to most women that I interview, As a young boy, I was always in love with women who did music because they have confidence. Where most people will try to beat you down so that you don't have the confidence of self, when a woman sings, dances, raps, or does anything that's in front of the stage, the world is hers at that moment, and she gives everybody her all. How did Brooklyn or – and – how did your native roots of Trinidad and Grenada and all that, how did that prepare you for the limelight to give you confidence to conquer the stage? Um, I want to say my parents, right, because mm-hmm. I grew up in a household where it was half and half, where my father is Trinidadian and my mother is St. Martin, from St. Martin, so that's the French okay. West Indies. Okay. Um, we, the music that was played, in this household was predominantly soca, calypso, reggae, dancehall, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't the hip hop. It wasn't none of that. It was just strictly Caribbean music. And mm-hmm. I grew up on that feel. I grew up on that aspect to where when you hear soca music, and I don't know if you listen to soca music, and I don't know if a lot of people do, but I know majority does, but when you hear it, and you can feel, you feel, you're feeling down. But once you hear this music, it's like, it just gives you this energy that you wasn't expecting five minutes ago because how you was feeling. Mm-hmm. And I included this into my music because this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to be anything other than, you know, a mix breed Trini the body. 
you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Brooklyn, um, when I leave outside of my household, it became Brooklyn. When I'm inside of my household, I'm in the Caribbean. And mm. to some people, that may not make sense. But the way that my parents tried to keep us, you know, was like into our heritage, into our roots and things like that. And when we step mm-hmm. outside, now I'm dealing with the roots of where I was born. So now mm-hmm. I get, I see a whole nother world versus the world that I see where I'm living mm-hmm. inside of these walls. So when I walk outside and I experience certain things, you know, it made me a, this tough experience that I have where mm. I don't I don't accept. Hold on, before I say this, I can curse on here. Yeah, this is this okay. interview. Okay, cool. I'll just say it. You know, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to curse. Just somebody say something. But no. um, yeah, um, when I step outside and I have to deal with you know the bullshit that comes with the street. Mm-hmm. I have to be tough. I have to be strong. I can't be weak because the moment I am weak, that's when somebody tries to prey on that. And mm-hmm. I have took all of that and included what, how I was brought up into my household and put it all together in one. And this album that I'm working on, you, everybody's going to hear it. And it's crazy to me because certain things that I say may seem like it's not true to some people because they don't know me mm-hmm. and what I've been through and what I've done, but they're going to get a piece of it when this, when I drop this album. <laughs> so. Yeah, I respect that because that's your truth. And that's the thing that I think hip-hop is missing. Not even hip-hop, all music. I think all music is missing a story. Everybody's just putting words together, but nobody's saying anything. Right. Let's go back to your roots, because soca music, even though I had you dancing, the origins of soca music was feel good music that got you up out of something in society that brought you down. That's why you constantly had rhythm. Even if we go to reggae, right? If we go to Gregory Isaacs and things like that, that's old school. Like, you know, you, you, you're talking about love, and it's not just about, oh, I'm with somebody and I'm happy. It's the feeling and experience of love that got you to, to, to harmonize that song. Definitely. If you want to go dance hall, we can go Buju, we can go whatever, Bounty Killer, whatever you want to do. Right, but the thing right. is, when you, when you, when you, that's right. When you, when you, when you go there though, they had something to tell you. When you're in the streets today, people are living their story, but they're not telling their story. Right. What is the advantage of you as an artist to tell your story and the truth, not only your truth? Mm-hmm. Um, my advantage is the fact that I take my time. At least mm. that's how I feel. I take my time because uh, I actually think about what I am going to say versus hearing a beat and just saying stuff that just sound like it's fire. You know what I mean? And I feel like music, music used to be a place to tell a story, like you said. Mm-hmm. When I hear these, when I hear songs now, I don't really hear a full story. You understand? It's like mm-hmm. you hear what they have, what they're wearing, where they're going, where they've been. But it's like, okay, who are you, though, in the mix of all of that? I, I like the nice bag and the nice shoes and the nice car. But who are you under all of that? I'm the type of person that gives people me regardless. Anybody could go on my Instagram right now and see the real me. You understand? Like, I promote my music on there. Yes, I do. I have professional photos on there. Yes, I do. But I also have personal photos as well because I want people to feel like they can relate to me. You know what I mean? I didn't have... I didn't have a female that looked like me on TV. I didn't have mm. that. You know, um, other than, mm. you know, some actors, actresses, but, like, it, it, it wasn't, the, it's not the same as what I wanted to see. 
mm-hmm. because they still didn't look like me. They were still kind of watered down, if it makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas me, I want people, women, men, to feel comfortable with who they are. You don't have mm-hmm. to make up yourself all day, every day to be, you know, recognized or to be loved. Just mm-hmm. love yourself for who you are, how you look. Every time you wake up in the morning, this is you. Don't hide mm-hmm. yourself from you because now you're lying to yourself by hiding who you are under all of this stuff that you put on. Now, I can't see who you are. You're just feeding me lies. Mm. Versus where you look at me, you see the truth. I give you everything. Everything. Mm. And if nobody can't see that or don't believe it, I mean, I can't do no more to persuade you. You just got to watch. And that's just that. And that's my advantage is me being me. I don't fake to be anybody else. I just want to be me. And that's just it. And that's the gift of being not only an artist but an individual, is that though some people may like your art, some people Mm -hmm. may not like your art, you still have to be able to rest within yourself at the end of the day to know that you did your best and you are doing your best, not following the trend. So let's get... Let's get to the music because while most people, well, you know, most people want to talk to the ladies and tell them how good they look and all this other stuff. I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? It's not really why I'm, 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 I'm what I'm here for. I just right. tell everybody out there: go to Trini the Body on Instagram and you will love it. Yes, you will love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm here for the I'm here for the music. Definitely, so, definitely. So let's talk about bounce. Let's talk right? about bounce now. Bounce has that vibe to it that is more than a bounce, though. It's more about where where are you at when I'm doing this? Like, why are you not here? Is that the attitude of the song? Um, the attitude of the song is more of the attitude of the song is more of this. It's more of me speaking to myself. Oh. And a third person, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I say that because, you know, I'm, I'm basically saying my name in, in the song mm-hmm. over and over. And that was, that was technically me introducing myself to the world, to people that, you know, uh, this is who I am. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, and it's so crazy that I actually recorded that song in St. Martin. Nice. Right? I recorded that song in St. Martin. I felt like if I'm going to do a song and mention either island, I want to be in one where I could feel it. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, bounce is more of me like, y'all hate to love me. But this is who I am, and mm-hmm. I'm about to I'm about to give it to you like this. It's mm-hmm. that attitude, and it's don't. It's like don't. Um, how can I say? Do mm, trying to put a word. Don't doubt yourself, Trini. You got mm-hmm. it. Do it. Keep whining. Keep grinding. Like that's what it is. So it's like. Whining is a part of my culture. This is what we do. We whine and we move our hips and our waistline. So it's mm-hmm. like keep doing it because a lot of people, some people had a lot to say about my dancing and me dancing all the time, me doing videos like that or whatever because they don't really see me doing, uh, they don't really see me teaching the dancing. They don't see me teach. I teach the kids back in St. Martin. I teach to a lot of kids. And they put on shows, and they get paid, and they do all that. But mm-hmm. um, this particular thing is like, yo, keep doing it. And so I'm like, wine, Trini, wine, Trini. When I keep saying that, it's like, keep doing it. Forget everybody. Mm-hmm. That was the attitude. That was the attitude of the purpose of the song. That's why I said the song is like, why aren't you here? Because right. it's like a reassuring song to tell everybody you're here. <laughs> Right, yes, 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 yes. And, and, and the thing about the song, 
the thing about the song is this. When you hear the beat and you hear the context of the song, the song really is, it's more vibish than just dance. It's a message in there. What is yeah. the message that you want the listener to get from you as you talk to yourself in your song? Um, hmm. That's a good question. I want the listener to get this message. It's more about believing in yourself, pushing yourself, and don't stop. Because you have doubters and naysayers, you know. So that's mm-hmm. that's what it is. Without me using those words, it's like I want the the people listening to keep doing, catch this vibe, and if I could do it, you could do it. Period. But you're doing it. That's right. the thing, though. That's the thing, though, and that's what most people don't understand about that thing I love about women who do music and things like that, is the confidence. By helping the children dance, not only do you teach them mental health, you're teaching them genuine generational health because now they value themselves because they, they, they see that they do can do something well. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. by, making, by making music, you're playing hatred, you're playing evil, you're playing negativity out of people, and you're playing confidence into them. So you're healing their mind and their body and their spirit at the same time. Not only that, let's go a little bit deeper. When you make good music and you create harmony, you're speaking the rhythm of the spirit. So when the spirit is fed, you're giving people memories and long-lasting joy. How does it feel to know that you're changing the world with sound instead of just being a person trying to make change with sound? Um, it, feels, it feels really good um, to be able to do something like this because I didn't think so back to what I was saying before, I didn't think that I can actually do this because, honestly mm-hmm. speaking, um, this was never a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. This music wasn't a passion of mine. Um, it was more of, uh, let me try it because people keep telling me um, my voice. People closest to me, they're like, yo, you got the voice for it, do it, ooh, ooh, wow, wow. And that's what made me do it. So um, it feels really great where I get e- I get emails, I get text messages, I get inboxes of people telling me I just heard bounce or I just heard paper and I love it. I keep playing it. It makes me feel good. I do it, and it's like it makes you feel good, but it makes me feel even greater to know mm-hmm. that I was able to move you in any way possible, however it may move you. But to know that I am the person who was responsible for that reason, I'm grateful. You I'm know, grateful. Um, yo, something that you just said sparked something in me. Um, Which part? <laughs> Which the part message. The messages that you're getting, right? Yeah. That's all well and good because you hit the people. But see, that's the vocal message. Mm-hmm. There's a physical message that you give as well. Mm-hmm. And it's not about the shape of your butt or how, how, how you whine. Right. It's, the, it's the value that you have as that voice. You have on your Instagram a post where you show the wall and you talk about melanin and you get okay. to go into your melanin. Right. For those who don't know, melanin is one of the most special things that the Most High can give you, whether you have a lot or a little, it doesn't matter. Everybody has a form of melanin. Right. And we live in a world where people don't appreciate the beauty of melanin. Mm -mm -mm. How does your melanin make, how does your melanin make you even more of an artist? And why did you have to point that out to people who are watching you? Okay. So melanin runs deep for me. Um, and I'm about to go a little deep and give people a little bit about me. They about to hear some truth. Um, melanin was deep for me because, um, my mom is a light skinned woman, right? And mm-hmm. I grew up in a house with just her, 
my dad, and my two brothers. Now, outside of myself, the only woman that I have here is her. So when you turn on TV and you see nothing but, you know, lighter women get praised uh, for so many different reasons, whatever it is, um, you then question yourself as a kid. Like, why I don't look like that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I asked my mother one day, and I was like, you know, um, Mom, why why don't I look like you? And, you know, I have the same color as my dad. Like, I want to look like you. I don't want to look like this. I struggled with that. I struggled with my color at one point. And my mother will always reassure me that, you know, my skin is very beautiful. And, um... It was, like, great hearing that from your parent, but when, you know, you go outside and step into the world and they're like, oh, you're pretty for a dark skin girl. It's like, what? Like, mm-hmm. I, I can't be pretty if, if, if you know, without being a dark skin girl? Like, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense to me. It didn't sit right. It didn't feel right. So I questioned it. Mm-hmm. But, um, like I said, back to when I was 13 is when I started to – Love the skin I was in. And when I looked at myself, I looked at my, in the mirror almost every day, every day of my life, and kept talking to myself and telling me that I am beautiful, that my skin is beautiful, and there's no other skin color that's more beautiful than mine. Mm-hmm. I felt that. Every time I said it to myself, I felt it. And that stuck with me. And I mm-hmm. want girls that look like me to love themselves just as much as I do. So as much as I can, you're going to hear me say this shit in my song. You're going to hear me say this shit in every song if I have to, because I want people to understand that melanin is nothing to be ashamed of. Melanin is nothing to uh, hate. It is everything to love. It is everything to appreciate and cherish. Without mm. this skin, I wouldn't be who I am today. Without mm-hmm. this skin, I wouldn't be me. Everybody listen up on the line. This is Karev from Heritage Hip Hop with Trini the Body, upcoming superstar that you can see and hear her music on every streaming platform. Let's, let's continue what you said about you, though, mm-hmm. because – the reason why I had to pick that out was because looking at your Instagram, yeah, you got the model thing. You got models coming to you doing your videos and everything. I even like the way you you you, could, you have the look of your videos. You sitting in the chair, the, 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 you know, the, the queen's chair, the throne, melanin yeah. on the wall. That means you're a visual artist as well as a, a vocal artist as well. Yeah. You inspire generations by what you do and what you put out. And one thing and one color that always inspires generations of people is green because everybody wants money, money, yep. money, money. And you have a song out as well called Paper. Tell me yep. about Paper and where we're taking that single. All right. So Paper was definitely a fun song to do, and I actually did that song in one day, um, if I'm being <laughs> honest. <laughs> okay. Because it was like it was like it's a fun song, it's a first song. I don't want to do too much on it. I just mm-hmm. want people to have fun. They can play it wherever they play the club, car, whoever can play it. So um, I was actually working on my project now that I'm about to finish up, and I realized that how the hell can a goddamn twerker don't have a twerk song on her album? That does not make sense, right? Interesting. Mm-hmm. So I had to hit up the producer, my producer, um, at the time was Malcolm Seth. And um, I told him, I was like, listen, I need me a twerk song. Within like a couple of days, I no, I'm lying, probably like a week or so, he ended up sending me the beat. When he sent me the beat and I heard it, I instantly fell in love. And instantly I was like, hmm, listening to the, the beat, I found the hook within itself, within the beat. Because I'm like, hmm. Let me, let me say something that I'm already doing. Here goes back to me being real with myself, right? Mm-hmm. So I work nine to five, have a nine to five, and I love to twerk. That's where I'm working, I'm twerking, I'm getting paper came from. Mm-hmm. So 
that's how uh, paper ended up, you know, becoming what it is, uh, being created. And, um, yeah, it's just a fun song. I just want people to have a good time. Uh, definitely when you do listen and you listen to some of the words, everything that uh, I am saying is definitely true. There's no lying intended <laughs> at all whatsoever. Okay. Um, so, yeah, when, when you hear me say, fuck with me, Ed, don't play, I'm talking about my cousin. She do not play about me <laughs> at <laughs> all. So that's just okay. real shit. You feel me? I can't lie. I cannot lie. I had to add that in there, but um, it's definitely definitely was a fun song, and I'm I'm loving the fact that everybody's loving the song. They're actually loving the song more than I thought they would, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah. I gotta ask you something. Wait, wait. I gotta ask you something because every man loves twerking. Believe me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And 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 I gotta be honest with you. Yes. In today's hip hop. It yeah. seems like people pay more attention to the twerk than to the words. How do you make sure people get a healthy dose of both? Um, so, honestly speaking, the words to a twerk song don't really matter so much. And I, I know. That, and I say that because it's more of the beat. It's more mm-hmm. of how the bass is fitting. It's more mm-hmm. of the rhythm. It's more of the vibe. And, um, the the words definitely uh the hook is definitely a big part of the song so the verses really and truly don't matter as long as your hook is fire and the beat is crazy you know it, it's just gonna pop but um to get people to listen to, you, to the words um you have to be actually saying something that they want to listen to when they didn't hear it the first time they're going to listen mm-hmm. back to him and be like, oh, wait a minute. She just said what? He said what? And it's like, that's the only way that people would really and truly want to pay attention to the words of a twerk song. It's not really about the the words so much. It's more of the beat when it comes to a twerk song. But this is why you make more than one type of song, one type exactly. of style of music, so that way the any message you want to get through, you put it on those songs. So... When I like when you hear my other songs, you're gonna see like, okay, she wanted us to know this. She wanted us to know that. So in my first song, it ain't nothing really crazy that I'm gonna be saying because it's not it's not like on that type of timing when it comes to that particular song. You know. I it's like that more, because I wanted you to tell everybody that you're more than a twerk song maker, but even when you make twerk music, there's different types of twerk music. Whether you got southern twerk, that's not as bass heavy, or you got that lean back clap, right. or you got, or you got up north, which is your type, which is hard, boom right. backers, or then you got the stuff that's from overseas, the the right. wine music, or you got the the um, used to call it samba music and stuff from the um, from the Latin yeah. countries, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's different there's different genres. It's not, look, within the genre, there's different flavors of what you can do, yeah. and the basic thing I wanted to say with you saying all that is this. You're not a one-dimensional artist, and oh, that's no, what's going to no. make you endure. Yeah. I could tell by the sound, the beats that you rapped on, that you're not a one-dimensional artist. One thing I heard people say is, I don't give a fuck about a beat. I just rap. I can tell that you're not that type of artist. No. My question to you is this, though. I don't want to put you in a box, but I want you to tell me, if someone listen to your music, what's the one thing they're going to walk away from or what I mean walk away with that they got from your sound? They're going to walk away with the fact that I'm versatile. Mm. Um, They're going to say to themselves and maybe to others, like, okay, I thought that she was this one particular artist, but I see that she varies through all genres, and she is different from the rest. I don't sound like everybody. I don't look like everybody. So when you hear the music, you're going to walk away happy. You might walk away, like, sad because I brought up I brought up feelings in one of the songs that, you know, may hit home for you. And it's going to be like, oh, shit, like, I felt that, you know. But at the end of the day, you gonna get me. 
Mm. So let's give the world you then. Let's give the world you. Tell everybody your social media is and how they can find you and your music. All right, so you guys can find me on Instagram at Trini the Body. That's T R I N I T H E B O D Y. Find me at, at that on Instagram, Twitter, even though I don't really use that. <laughs> but you can find me there. My Snapchat is Trini the Model. And you can find my music everywhere iTunes, Spotify, Tidal. Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, you name it, is there. Trini the Body. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm about to drop the video for paper real soon. I'll be posting the date up shortly, but definitely stay tuned for the video of paper because it's coming. It's going to be real funny and cute. So everybody out there listening, go listen to Trini the Body's music. I have both songs already myself. Thank you. And <laughs> more, more importantly, I'm gonna call you Miss Body, Miss Body. One thing I'm gonna tell you: no we do not believe we do not believe in streaming on Heritage Hip Hop. You see, okay. everybody, if you have a song that you like, go purchase the song because that way you show into the artist and you guarantee yourself more music. If the okay. internet went down today, say Donald Trump got reelected and a bomb went off, and the internet went down. If you right. don't have your, if you didn't buy your music, you don't have your music. So, are you really a fan? Are you really hip hop without your phone? Okay. If you can't really wow. jam, so. I ask you, if she has music that you like, please purchase it so you guarantee her the, the love that you swear you have, and she can guarantee you more music because you're showing into her. Do you agree? I agree. Thank you. I say that shit all the damn time. I be like, did you download? Did you go buy the song? Yeah, and nah, I put it on Spotify. Uh, I said, bye. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And for everybody out there, why not you? The bottom line is, if, if you are an independent artist and you have music out there, and not only do you, if you do not have an interview set up, or you have music out there and you're telling everybody to stream without interviewing, without downloads, you're missing out on royalties and yeah. touching the fan base. So without doing such, you're hindering yourself. So if you're looking for help with that, come to HeritageHipHop.com. You can email us, and you can also reach us on all our social media so we can help you learn the tricks of the trade. Of course, that's, that's our business. So with that being said... With that being said, this interview is over, but not our fun. I would like to do a game. I would like to play a game with you called the Rapid Fire Questions. Are you ready? Would you like to play with me? Ooh, you about to get personal? No. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. I ain't scared. All right. Scared. What's up? So the Rapid Fire Questions are not yes-no questions. These are questions about you, your genre, and your depth and understanding of music. Now, because you're a different artist than some of the people I've interviewed, I'm going to change the questions for you, but we're going to make them just as fun. You ready? Yeah. Question number one, what song or album from another person's catalog perfectly describes you? What song or album, or album. Mm-hmm. personally describes me? Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm going to have to say Jenny the Bay. Okay, <laughs> but, but but for somebody else, but from somebody else, not you. I know. I, uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, honestly, we we gonna market you, treat the body on everything. Word up. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Honestly, um, I I, I don't know. Oh, I'm telling you, you tapping out. You tapping out already? I, I'm not tapping out. I just oh, okay. can't answer that because I really mm-hmm. and truly don't see myself. In anybody. If I am going to be honest, I'll say, you know what? I'll say Marshall Montano, Double M, his album Double M. Okay. That's a, a Soka album. Okay. Look, thank you for putting everybody on. They got something to listen to now. You're that's what's yes. up. Yes. If you haven't heard it before, go listen. <laughs> All right. All right. That's the first question. Here's the second question. As a young lady that's going to become a great woman, what is the thing that you learned by doing music to to protect that the world tries to take away from you? Your self-respect. Um, Go ahead. Your self-respect um, 
and your masters. Everything that you own is yours. You know, don't let anybody try to take that from you. Don't mm-hmm. let anybody try to make you do something strange for some change or something strange for some fame. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. Um, and I learned that not actually being involved in that situation myself, being that I am fairly new, but um, also stories I've heard and people I know that went through that is where I can speak on that situation. So, yeah, that mm. is my I learned, definitely. Okay. I feel that. That's a good message, too. And I respect you for giving that because a lot of people need to hear that because a lot of hoes sleep their way to the middle. And oh, some yeah. of the men are- and some of the men are hoes too. So, mm-hmm. oh, we, we, we'll hold back. We tell the truth on here. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so my next question is this. Well, I'm gonna let you pick it. You want to go hip hop or you want to go West Indies? What's better for you? Um, it don't matter. Throw it at me. Whichever one you want to ask. Okay. It was hard for you to tell me about the album. That define a song that defines you. Uh-huh. If somebody said to you, "Let's do hip hop," okay. If I had, if I somebody asked you to define hip hop, give me five albums that defines hip hop to you. Oh, five albums. Come on now, you know my brain ain't working right. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> um. Okay, five albums that define hip hop. I can't really, I do not know the album, these people album names. I'm not gonna lie. I'm okay. sorry. But I will name names of people that I feel define hip hop. Okay. Make, that's cool? Uh, okay. I bet. Um, I wanna go with Nas. Okay. I wanna go with Biggie. Okay. I want to go with um, Lil Kim. Okay. Nikki of recent generation time is why I say hip hop. Uh, oh, okay. Artist. Nikki. Um, That's four. Yes, I got one more. And one more. I want to say Jay Z only because at the time of me growing up. That was my hip hop. Those. That you have me. a very New York East Coast bias. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm okay, so sorry. but that's what's up. I'm not mad. Look, I'm this sorry. is who you are. That's what's up. Yeah. I'm not mad because, like, like I said, this is about you and your understanding of hip hop. So my question to you is: I'm not going to ask you anything about specific songs. Okay, okay. I'm going to ask you this. <clears throat> What song made you change your life and why? What song made me change my life? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. What song made me change my life and why? Um, okay. It was a song that I heard in, I want to say, Hillside Church. I believe mm-hmm. what. Um, can't remember the name of the said song, but it was a song in church that I heard. And when I heard it, it instantly like sent chills through my body. Um, Mm -hmm. and their words spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I knew I needed to change the direction that I was going in. Mm. And then a year later, I became single. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> okay that's funny but all right <laughs> i'm gonna put it to you like this the reason why i ask that question is because music has a spirit because hip-hop is not music hip-hop comes from the most high the first beat you ever heard was your mother's heartbeat the first the, the first harmony you ever have ever felt was not music it was your body working together to the rhythm of life when you, as, as you walk through life, you took steps. We write music on the lines of paper called steps. So your life mirrors that, which is a spiritual journey. So the spirit of music moved you, and that song helped change your life. Yeah. As an artist, is your goal to change somebody's life? Yes or no? Um, as an artist, my goal was not to change somebody's life. 
per se. Well, I wanted mm-hmm. to help if I could. And if my music were to change somebody's life, I would be, like, ecstatic. I would be very happy, and it would warm my heart to know that this product that I put out into the universe was able to change someone's life. You know, my goal isn't to set out to change someone's life. It was not the goal. But if it happens, that's great. That's great. Who wouldn't want to be a part of someone's change? You know, that's dope. That's dope within itself for somebody to say, yo, you changed my life. Mm -hmm. I have two more questions. And then we're going to end the interview, everybody. Once again, thank you for listening to Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This is Karev with Trinita Body, Life yes. Changer, Melanie yes. Queen, Twerker, and she yes. has Bounce. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's move into the last two questions, which is, I think, the last question is my most important question. I don't want to, I want to get you ready for that, so I'm giving you some time to, to, to build up to it so you can get you a little nervous. <laughs> but the uh, but this question is more meaningful to me to hear your 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 um your view on this. Music is so universal that it touches our lives at any given time and we get inspired. You know what I'm saying? Whether somebody's knocking on a car, you um you're knocking on the school table, somebody's humming, singing, you hear basketball. And it mm-hmm. takes you to all these different people that you enjoy and love in music, right? Mm-hmm. If Trini the Body can make her perfect song who would be on her perfect song? Who's doing the beat? Oh, who's featuring? Oh, I like this. I like this. Okay, my perfect song. Um, it will have. Mhm. Rihanna. Oh yeah, I love Rihanna. Yeah, man. Like what? Don't get no better than that. Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I want to say. Marshall Montana, I don't know if you guys know, but I love him, okay? That is okay. my cousin, all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. But that's my cousin. Um, mm-hmm. And I want DJ Khaled to produce it. Oh, so you want a crossover hit? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm mad. I'm mad. That's okay. my favorite hit. And my favorite record because he... DJ Khaled, as we all know, creates some bangers. Every mm-hmm. time he creates something, it's fire. Um, mm-hmm. Marshall Montano is, you know, a piece of my culture. Mm-hmm. Rihanna brings the sexy, soul, soulful Caribbean voice. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I bring... A little of everything to the table. So. Okay. I'm feeling it. That would be my perfect song. Shout, shout out uh, to the Caribbean, because we could keep going there, this interview. Shout out to the Caribbean, everybody out there, yeah. especially Trinidad, my partners from Trinidad, BQ, yeah. shout out to you, you know what I mean? Shout out to you. Trinidad. At Red and Black, at Red and Black go everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean? I got um, a black stick right here on my bed. That's what I'm talking about. See, it go everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Just like Brooklyn. If you Trini and you from Brooklyn, wow, <laughs> that's a whole exactly. other thing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But um, huh? Go ahead. They're gonna what? Go ahead. All right. Well, every every artist that she's naming, cousin, everybody, you have a spot on Heritage Hip Hop. All you gotta do is show up, and we got you. All right. So um. My last question, like I said, is my most important question to the first interview, which means you have an open-door policy. You don't have to be industry to be on Heritage Hip Hop. Though we do talk to industry artists, yeah. we honor the independent, and you don't need to be hot industry-wise to, have, to be able to tell your story. So the mic is always available to you, okay? Okay. So my most important question to end this interview out is this. Unfortunately, you're not going to be on this earth forever. May the most high bless you and your family, and may no tragedy before you, especially in the wake of COVID and all the other crap that's going on right now, okay? Right, thank you. But, thank, you sure. thank you. And there's going to be a time when you're not going to walk on the planet, but your music is going to be here. So you have a digital footprint that's going to lead the world in sound and experience, that you're going to have a family that's going to pass your music down. 
Not only are they going to pass your music down, one day they're going to play you on the radio or you're going to be heard in a movie and people are going to study this movie and be like, ah, F the movie, that song was dope. <laughs> they're going to pick out your song. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And 500 years from now, let's say, you're going to be introduced to a new generation of people. My mm. question to you, the most important question to you is this. What is your legacy that made the world better because you did music? What is my legacy? That made the world better because you did music. That made the world better five years from, 500 years from now. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's how dope your music is. You always want to hear about Michael Jackson, right? Why not you? I just had to say the question again so I could get it right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, but I'm going to speak you up because, like I said, this is you now. We're going gonna, to gonna feed you, you know, we're going to make you, you are that important. First and foremost, yes, 500 years from now, how was the world made better because you did music? People found your music and it got better. Why? Well, my legacy is still being, you know, created. And my music will change the world or could change the world. And 500 years from now, because the same feelings that everyone receives now from the music, they would it would project into the future. Whereas my kids would then be able to uh, pass it on to their kids, and they would pass it on to their kids, where they would get <clears throat> they would get the background, the feel of everything that I were, everything uh, that I am, in that shape of my music. So it would be able to create maybe more found, more foundations and it may create uh, more opportunities for other young black queens such as myself uh, to have a platform to step out and create and be more creative. So I'm hoping that this would just be another source where young women um, won't be afraid to step into their dreams as far as music in any aspect, whether it's playing drums, any instruments, you know, singing, um, rapping, as long as I'm able, my music is able to at least touch one person and change one person's life, I think that's history right there. With that being said, everybody, remember, whether you consider yourself an elder queen or a youthful queen, your title is queen. And the most dominant thing about a queen is a king conquers, but a queen has dominion. So always reign supreme over what you do because you inspire the world with everything that you put out. This is Karev from Heritage Hip Hop with Trini the Body, and we say peace, and we out. Peace and blessings to all the kings and queens out there. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. Have a good night. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this episode journey we took with Trini the Body. Shout out to all the West Indies, all the Caribbean, all of Brooklyn. But of course we Jersey So represent Brick City And all the people we have out here That represent the same thing Listen man Always celebrate your culture You know what I'm saying And hip hop is our culture And we salute Trini the body For not only Building up her own self esteem To give positive messages And to make us dance But we salute everybody out there Because you are worth something You are priceless And no matter What the world may tell you Or what you think You have to overcome you are a precious commodity of God and of this world. And by celebrating yourself, you celebrate the one who created you. So shout out to you. Shout out to everyone out there who's melanated, who thinks their skin may not be beautiful. It is. Shout out to you if you may not be able to dance as well. You're still wonderful. And the most high made you the way you are. So we can celebrate you, the individual, by coming to Heritage Hip Hop and telling your story. This episode is brought to you by heritagehiphop.com please join heritagehiphop.com heritage hip hop youtube and all our social medias if you're a member of our website you get free music and you join one of the biggest families that's getting bigger by the day so please join heritagehiphop.com by subscribing to our youtube channel and clicking the link or the 
bell i should say for notifications you get updated information on when new videos and interviews drop and many more things that's going on that we have planned we'd like to give a shout out not only to trinity the body but to ab one of moonlight media uh thank you for uh, hooking us up with this interview salute and we have an interview with him on heritage hip-hop as well we'd like to give a shout out to our team shout out to fatty's place it's bq salute shout out to michael bradley transparent credit repair Remember, if you want to change your life, one decision to do so is changing your credit score. Go to HeritageHipHop.com and click on the link for Transparent Credit Repair. You get 20% off of all services. So make sure you do that. Shout out to Fire Jaws, MC, promoter, marketer, and, place, and placer of great, not only talent, but good brands. If you're interested, hit Fire Jaws up on Instagram. Lex Diamonds of Diamonds Entertainment, LLC. Look, at, look for Lex P on YouTube and you can see his sports podcast. Shout out to the Goodfellas, our sister network, G O O D F E L L A Z TV. Um, we have a show called The Recap, which features me. Also, Tommy Guns, Dab the Photographer of AEP underscore presents on Facebook, Shaw Montana, and DJ Big A, which is A H D A Y A R on YouTube as well. For everybody out there who would like to get sponsored or to give sponsorship to Heritage Hip Hop, we are accepting everyone who connects with our brand so if you're looking to get to, to sponsor and to get your uh, ideas and things out there we share the information and our platforms to help you grow as well we support black businesses uh, well, everybody out there in the world covid is going on unfortunately i'm covid positive as of this recording please take care of yourself and everybody around you make sure you stay safe Right, wear wear a face covering. Be safe out there. You know what I'm saying. Be clean. You know, uh, to people out there who are looking at the injustice in the world, stand strong. Let the world hear your voice because you make change. Whether it's things going on in Nigeria, we 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 stand for hashtag in SARS or the police brutality in this country. We stand for everyone out there. So mind you, your life is precious. And with that being said, we say peace, and we out.